Thanks for joining the Gut Pharmacist podcast. We have Dr. Robert Silverman here today who will be discussing a very hot topic these days, long COVID. So thanks for being on, Dr. Robert. I am so excited to be here. Thank you for taking time to uh, allow me to share some key takeaways with uh, everybody that listens to you. Love what you do, by the way. Oh, thank you. I can say the same thing to you. So thanks for being here. Uh, Give us a quick background, credentials, why you chose functional medicine and chiropractic. You know, it's an interesting marriage. Um, I suffer from what they call congenital torticollis. So I have an asymmetry in my neck that drove me into chiropractic. The medical model really didn't have anything, was touched by a chiropractor. And as we all know, a chiropractic natural path Uh, doctors usually have been touched by somebody else and that's been their impetus to go into the field. Uh, Going through the chiropractic training, I always wanted to know, well, what's going on inside the body? How do you fix it from the inside out? And one of the best ways to was to get to the idea of root cause resolution and physiology and functional medicine adds that. So if you will, my left hand is chiropractic, looking at the mechanical, my right hand is the biochemical, using the tenets of functional medicine, put them together, and we've got a good health handshake. Oh, I love that. And you mentioned torticollis. I actually deal with cervical dystonia and torticollis. Mm. So that's interesting. We have that similarity here. Uh, but I plan to hopefully cure it one of these days. I know they say it's not possible, but we'll see. (laughs) So let's get into the topic today, long COVID root causes and strategies, because we love to talk about root causes here. We want to know why of the why of the why, peeling back the onion layers. So what requirements must be met to be considered a long COVID patient? Wow, that's a great question. So I'm really going to give you the technical definition, and it'll be the last time in this whole interview I give you some technical definition. The CDC defined post-COVID conditions, which are also known as long COVID, which is my choice. There's also long Harlow syndrome, post-COVID syndrome, post-acute COVID-19, or PASC, post-acute sequelae of SARS-CoV-2. Basically, as a newer returning ongoing health problem appearing four or more weeks after being first infected with the virus. The WHO used a broader definition, saying that the long COVID uh, usually occurs from weeks to months from the onset of COVID-19 with symptoms for at least two months and can't be explained by any alternative diagnosis. The symptoms may have persisted since initial illness, gone away, repeated, or be new. So the takeaway is you're sick for a period of time. Your symptomologies do not abate. Interesting. The term long hauler COVID originally was a patient created term in May of 2020 by a Twitter expert. It was not a medical model. So for me, that's an interesting takeaway. But without talking about long COVID, I mean, uh, let me give you some factoids. And I think everybody needs to know this. Estimates have shown that long COVID has cost the U.S. economy $3.7 trillion and is growing. That's equivalent to the recession of 2007 and 2008. Wow. Yeah. So when people look at that, they realize that it's a major health issue. So for people like you and I, I mean, I'm crowded. I'm not happy about being crowded, but I'm crowded. You know, I, right. as you said, I'm from New York if anybody noticed with the little accent, but I am right where it started. So people have been coming in, um, you know, six months after infection, it's been shown in certain data that 68% of people suffer from long COVID symptomology. It's over 50 long-term effects. Global prevalence is 120 days after infection was at 50%. I mean, there's all different studies, but most people ask to really piggyback on your question is, how is long COVID exhausting the body? Because we know the number one symptomology is fatigue. Well, basically four factors increase the risk where they have an adverse effect of an immune system. Number one, high levels of viral RNA during the infection. So if you and I, unfortunately, are in a room with 500 people and 250 of them have COVID, we have a higher viral infection. We're probably going to be sick versus two or three people something called the presence of certain autoantibodies. So everybody knows what an antibody is. It's our protector. An autoantibody, which probably leads into a whole discussion that we hopefully will be able to get to at some point today or tomorrow of autoantibodies, mean these are antibodies that attack us and they lead us down the path of autoimmunity. 
There's also a tremendous reactivation of Epstein-Barr virus, which is mononucleosis. We're going to see a lot of that. You know, viruses lie dormant in the central nervous system. This particular virus, SARS-CoV-2, wakes them up. And also, probably one of the biggest markers that I look for, and I'm sure you look for in your practice also, is type 2 diabetes, or if you will, high blood sugar, hemoglobin A1C, and lack of insulin resistance. Many of the long COVID patients have a disrupted immune system, circulatory problems. We've also seen problems in the brain. And finally, here are some of the big symptomologies of long COVID. If you're suffering post-COVID or fatigue, about 80% of people do, that poses a problem. There's some mitochondrial dysfunction. Post-exertional malaise, meaning if you try to exercise, you're getting extremely tired and want to give up on exercise. And some of the hidden ones are cognitive dysfunction, sensory motor, headache, memory. And let's not forget, we've got to cover it. Gut issues, because yes, the gut is my the epicenter of your health. Mm -hmm. Love it. And then, so the way I see it, and you may agree, you may not, but COVID is more of a trigger rather than a cause of the symptoms. So that's kind of how I see it because these pre-existing issues pile up over time. Eventually the COVID comes along, it's a trigger. It just unleashes a whole cascade of events. So you talked about some root causes. Mm -hmm. um, that is a huge one. So I know there's some microbiome imbalance, but what are some other gut issues that you notice with long COVID patients? You know, I, I want to piggyback on your statement and get into your question because I think it's very salient in that, as I said, this is a prober. And I think that, you know, people need to know that a virus needs a human host to live. And more so than that, a virus's sole purpose is not to kill the human host. Its purpose is to replicate and replicate and replicate. And when it hit America, because we were so unhealthy, and I know we'll mold and get into that, it was amazing. It was probably saying, wait, what's going on? Because if the host dies or gets very sick and gets isolated, it can't come in contact with other humans. So people need to know that this is a gnarly virus. And the key component is to carry gut health. And we'll keep saying that at every question and take care of your immune health. However, those pre-existing conditions, there's a word or a portmanteau called obesity. So if you had COVID-19, you had a higher incidence of obesity. If you had a higher incidence of obesity, you were more susceptible to COVID-19. Even just a few pounds overweight or a few extra pounds of adipose posed a tremendous issue and really changed the trajectory of this particular virus. Interestingly enough, fat cells, which are adipose, like I mentioned, are depositories for toxins. And this was one of the biggest reasons why we got so sick, because when the virus had a place to live, house, and protect itself in a fat cell, it perpetuated all these particular type of toxins. Now, what we saw with this interesting virus was if someone had immune dysfunction, boom, they were in trouble pulmonary dysfunction, kidney, heart, endotheliitis, or damage to endothelium. But probably the biggest thing was cardiometabolic disease. People have high cholesterol issues or high HDL, high triglycerides, low HDL, high blood sugar, hypertension, or something which refers to the idea of metabolic syndrome. Now, we've heard of the freshman 15. You know, we all went to college and we wanted to avoid right. the freshman 15. It was called the COVID-15. People were gaining weight like crazy. They're still gaining weight. You and I are treating people with post-COVID that have put on extra pounds. 61% of Americans had undesired weight gain and 42% in just the last year have gained more weight than they anticipated. Those who have had multiple cases of COVID-19 have had a 29-pound gain in average. Now, if you take me, I'm a little over six feet. I'm 185 pounds, so my BMI is 24.8. Not that you and I do BMI, but just to use that as a reference point. Put 29 pounds on me, and I'm obese. I'm exercising nice. less. I'm snacking more. So the takeaway, let's give the list. Cardiovascular disease. If you have cardiovascular disease, you are susceptible to long COVID. Diabetes or high blood sugar. Obesity. Metabolic syndrome, age. Unfortunately, age is a criteria. Your thymus gland, which is one of your big immune glands, 
goes through involution as the first gland in your body, meaning it starts to shrink as a teenager. So by the time that you're 70, your thymus gland isn't there, you're not making T cells. So age, unfortunately, is an immune problem. So I always tell everybody, there's three stages. There's 18 and, and below, there's 18 to about 60, and there's 60 and above. What are you doing to make sure that you hit when you hit 60, that you have a strong, robust immune system? Pulmonary disease, liver, kidney, autoimmune conditions, unfortunately. And you and I probably agree because the gut is so vital to us. And when the gut is compromised, it precipitates a lot of autoimmune conditions, chronic neurological issues, brain, heart, and lung. How about hypovitamin Dosis? Your vitamin D levels are low. It's been beat up a little bit, but here's a takeaway. There was a population study in seven clinical studies that found that higher vitamin D levels were linked to lower COVID-19 mortality risks, vaccinated and not vaccinated, and that level was 50. So right. you and I both test vitamin D regularly, I would have to say those new patients coming in that have had 50 or more is a very small percentage. Where I live in New York or the Northeast or the Midwest, we don't have sunlight year round. You got to get your vitamin D levels up. The literature, the amount of data behind it is really potent. Um, and I, I think I'm going to be speaking to exactly where you and I are real comfortable. There's a study that talked about post-acute COVID syndrome and gut dysbiosis, gut dysbiosis, the leveling of go. good and bad bacteria. Everybody, let's take a second and understand that your gut is an ecosystem. There's living, breathing organisms in there. A part of them should be symbiotic, where they're able to populate and grow. The bulk are commensal. They're fine. They take up real estate. And then there's something called parasitic. Those are the bad guys. As long as we have 15% or less of the parasitic, we have a strong gut neighborhood ecosystem. Once we have more than about 15%, we have that unleveling, which is called dysbiosis. So to get back to the study, post-acute COVID-19 syndrome and gut dysbiosis linger beyond one year after SARS-CoV-2 clearance. So what am I saying? After one year that you've had post-COVID, you still have unleveling in your gut ecosystem. And it's shown that even mild SARS-CoV-2 infections result in long lasting microbial instability. So guys, gals, everybody, I'm gonna ask you, if you've had COVID, did you have any gastrointestinal problems post COVID? Have you had any autoimmune conditions post COVID? Have you had any musculoskeletal conditions post COVID? They all can be attributed to the gut because the gut is the epicenter of your health. It's where your macro and micronutrients are absorbed. 80% of your immune cells are in your gut. So if I mention, and the doc mentions, you know, you need to take care of your immune health. It starts and ends with your gut health. I totally agree. And just hearing that makes my heart flutter. I swear, <laughs> that's my passion right there. So are there any other root causes that you wanted to mention before I get into the next question? You know, it's interesting with the root cause, because when you really think about it, our, one of our biggest problems is America is unhealthy. And I kind of alluded to that before. 75% of Americans are overweight or obese. 63% of our caloric intake comes from ultra processed food. So we're 4.24% of the world's population, yet we were 15 to 18% of the world's death, depending on which data you go by. Food was a driver for our inflammation. Food is a potentiator for inflammation. Good food should be a potentiator for inflammation. A little factoid, if you will. Sugar is probably the most deleterious macronutrient you could conceivably consume. We obviously want to consider and decrease the amount of sugar that we consume. 300 calories of sugar decrease your immune system for a two-hour period by 50%. Wow. That's something that we need to remember right there. Sugar is deleterious to overall health. 
Sugar works with the reward center in our brain, and that's why we like it, because it's the most overused, over-counter drug today. The average American consumes 160 pounds of sugar per year. You couple that with the consumption of 146 pounds of gluten, the average American is almost taking in a pound a day of wheat slash gluten and sugar, none of which is good for overall immune health and none of which is good for overall gut health. Totally agree. So with that being said, with diet being a huge part of it, what are some ways that we can reduce the severity and the length of long COVID symptoms? What a great question. And I, I mean, that's probably going to captivate a lot of people listening. I have a little saying, you can't control the virus. You can only control the host. I can't control the air. I can use a filter. Yes, and we do. But I can control the host. And you want to make yourself, your friends, your family, your patients, inhospitable hosts. And one of the best ways to do it is really to start with nutrition. Good study. They compared Japan population to American population. COVID cases, 12 times higher in the U.S. than in Japan. Death, unfortunately, 17.4 times higher in the U.S. than Japan. We in America, our men are 7.4 times heavier, more obese than their Japanese counterparts. And the American women are 10 times greater. So what, what's the reason? What's the difference? Diet. We consume 1.5 times more saturated fat, considerably less omega-3 fatty acids. We also consume much more beef, grain-fed beef, about 400%, and we consume more sugar and sweeteners to the tune of 235%, whereas Japanese eat much more fish, high in omega-3s, wild fish, of course, about 45%, a little more rice, only about 11%, and green tea, about 55%. Green tea is a huge takeaway. ECGC, study done in March of 2020 with no follow-up to this, showed that when you compare green tea versus other nutrients and some drugs on the market, blocked the docking of SARS-CoV-2 virus in our ACE2 receptors better than anything. So the bottom line is if you want to have some natural protection, you can start with green tea. So when you put that all together, once again, the Japanese have a much better health consumption, better lifestyle, and clearly they're eating more rich, unprocessed foods. And then one of the biggest pr problems, like to, to go into a little bit more detail, would be our immune system. Most people don't understand how our immune system works. And, um, you know, I don't want to get you shut down, so I'm not going to point fingers that people on the TV are just not explaining the immune system. But the immune system provides three levels of defense against disease-causing organisms. Number one, it's our barrier system. And you're going to love this because number one barrier is skin and mucous membrane. So we have a skin and a barrier. And my question to everybody is, if you have a cut in your skin, you know to put a Band-Aid on it. You know to use a stitch. If you have a cut in your intestinal wall, do you know to uh, allow it to heal? Do you know how to cover it up? Most people don't because they don't see it. So rolling right into that stomach acid and digestive enzymes, beneficial microbiota, those are our defense mechanisms. It has been postulated that the first time the outside world meets the inside world is when something gets digested through the small intestine into the bloodstream. So our digestive system is our own defense. And we know that because we've had things come up and go out really quickly. That's our body's beautiful way really not a lot of fun, but a beautiful way of protecting digestion and adversely affecting our immune system. Now, our immune system is interesting because it has two legs. It's called an innate and acquired or adaptive immunity. Everybody has an innate immune system the day they're born. They're macrophages. They're your Marines. They kill everything. That adaptive or acquired immunity we get as we grow older. Obviously, children, they get the flu, they get this, they get that. Um, whereas we as adults, we don't get it as regularly. That's called an acquired immunity. It's also adaptive because it's able to be flexible, we hope. And that's part of the problem. It's our immune systems in America are not flexible enough. That acquired immunity is B and T cells. 
T cells come from our thymus. We talked about that. And they recognize something. Whereas your B cells come from your bone marrow. They're antibodies. IgE, which is an allergic reaction, doesn't really play into what we're talking about with COVID. However, IgA, which is secretory, it's at the gut level. It's at the mucus level. It's at the lung level. IgM, which is an antibody, which comes out at an early time. And IgG, which is the one everybody's been talking about. IgG as an antibody is the most common antibody. 75% of your antibodies are IgG, and it's small enough to pass through the placenta to protect the fetus. And what does antibodies do? After the T cells recognize it, it categorizes and categor categorizes it so it's remembered. The problem that we're having is that our antibodies are not functioning well. And therefore, we're able and susceptible to have a second, third, and fourth infection. And one more thing, people are susceptible to cytokine storms. You know, well, the storm is because most Americans are pre-inflamed. And I know that when I say that, I'm speaking to the choir with you. So you have this idea of cytokines, which come out when you're inflamed, but there's this big storm. I think we need to worry about what we call the cytokine drizzle. It's just little drizzle of inflammation that everybody has as they're walking around. So that said, everybody needs to do a better job of keeping their immune system together because a normal immune response would be inflammation, innate immunity, adaptive immunity, resolution, and of course, memory antibodies. However, this SARS-CoV-2 is so unique. If our immune system isn't functioning, it doesn't remember what's going on and it poses a problem. Lastly, coming up for air, <laughs> I want to share with a concept of you immune imprinting. My patients have really found this fascinating. So our immune systems are not resilient. They're not flexible. They're not, they don't have the ability to move and mutate the way we'd like them to because of our environment, because of our gut health. And it's called immune imprinting. So what I see first and what I'm affected first, that's, I, that's what I see every time. So when that happens, every time, there's, when there's a viral variant, I'm not able to fight it off. And that's one of the reasons I'm sick. So there were two studies at MIT and Harvard, well over 100 patients, and it really showed there were neurological long COVID symptoms. People had inflammation in their brain and had cognitive de deficits. What they found was there was an underwhelming amount of antibodies to COVID, but an overwhelming amount of antibodies to coronavirus. Coronavirus is and was a common cold. It's just unique, SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 is not, it's new and it's gnarly. So our body was in our immune system was affecting it and reading it as it is something else, as opposed to what we're being attacked to. So the findings suggested that immune imprinting can cause neurological long COVID. So if anybody wants to balance their immune system, here are a couple of supplements that I would recommend. Vitamin C, zinc, a mixed mushroom complex, vitamin D3 with K2, probiotic, liposomal glutathione, selenium, omega-3, yes, elderberry, and of course, vitamin A. Love those. Elderberry is probably one of my favorites. I just love how it's antiviral. It slows the replication. So I'm really excited you mentioned that. Now, with all this amazing information that you've presented, I got to ask, can someone beat long COVID? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So do we have a better answer than what we're using now? I think so. I really do. And I think part of the problem is that most people don't understand what the problem with long COVID is. Um, and, that, and that's unfortunate. But yeah, so a brief overview. If you want to beat long COVID, let's improve our gut health. Let's improve our mitochondrial support. Let's allow our immune system to be resilient. Let's manage and modulate, if that was my credo, inflammation. Let's get the obesity down. Let's get people to lose some body weight. You know, it's almost been three years and no one's talked about that. So people say, well, it's easier, it's quicker to take a push button or this or that. But you know what? You've had three years. I mean, how many patients have lost 100 pounds in three years in your office if needed? 
So it's really possible. And for long-term health, obesity is a great thing. Get your blood sugar down. Get yourself anti-inflammatory. So if I were to put together my long haulers protocol, which is in my book, here's what I would do. And this long haulers protocol would be pointed at mitochondrial function. Number one reason for fatigue, mitochondrial dysfunction. And that's due to the fact of something called cellular danger response. So let me make that real simple. Why am I so tired? Well, everybody knows what a mitochondria does. It's the powerhouse of your cell. It makes this thing called ATP. More than 50% of your energy is used by your immune system when under attack. So clearly, you know, when you have COVID, you're using a lot of energy. Your mitochondria, which has origins, as you know, in bacteria and in your gut, it shuts off your mitochondria because it has a secondary effect and function from your innate immune system and you just go cold turkey. To restart it is a whole process. And in that restarting process, that's the problem. So I ask people, so your mitochondria shuts off. It shuts off with a button. Do you think that button just gets turned back on if you haven't taken care of yourself? So here's a way to help that button turn back on. Number one, I'm a big proponent of NMN, love some B vitamins, coenzyme Q10, acetyl-L-carnitine, alpha-lipoic acid, glutathione, magnesium, zinc, selenium, vitamin C, and of course your mixed mushrooms. I believe that you can either take them in a supplement or eat them. Nothing is more nutrient dense per calorie in the diet, in my opinion, than mushrooms. And they're outstanding to help your overall gut health. Something new that just came out as far as a combination. A lot of people have come to me and had some issues with performance, physical performance after COVID. A combination of L-arginine and vitamin C is shown to do a great job. Lifestyle hacks. What would I recommend to beat long COVID? Number one, we probably could be here all day. Intermittent fasting. So intermittent fasting or really time-restrictive eating because intermittent fasting refers to the idea of fasting for a day. Time-restrictive eating means to fast and feed in a day. I actually fast 14 hours and eat in 10 hours. So after the 12th hour of your fast, there's a process, a cleaning of your body of cells process. It's called autophagy. Autophagy, which won a 2016 Nobel Prize, actually means the breakdown of old cells using the debris to make new cells. When you do that, you get new immune cells and you get immune rejuvenated cells. You also get mitophagy, you get new mitochondria. The key to overall immune health, other than as a lifestyle hack, intermittent fasting would be low glycemic index carbs, no processed carbs, eat good fats and amino acids. So to say it real easy, you want a lifestyle hack, eat protein, eat fats, try to avoid your carbohydrates, GPS, no gluten, no processed food, no added sugar, DNA, no dairy no nicotine, no artificial sweeteners. Avoid any deep frying and avoid your vegetable and seed oils. Get good quality sleep because you're able to detox your brain. Try and get exercise every day. We're finding out less and less exercise is very uh, restorative of your overall immune system. Detox spring in the fall. And you know, guys, I'm a modality guy. Low level laser has worked wonders for my patient base allows for electromagnetic transfer of energy. And if you really want to beat it and you want to be ahead of the curve, let's talk about vagus nerve stimulation. Your vagus nerve, vagus nerve is cranial nerve number 10. It goes from the medulla oblongata down through the transverse colon. I know I'm speaking to you now. It is the key component of the gut to brain axis, the super highway to health. So if you can stimulate the vagus nerve, whether it be laser, everyday breathing, they call it a physiological sigh, two breaths in, one slow breath out. That's how Mr. Right here, type A, tries to calm down every day when I do my calm Same out here. in the morning. <laughs> See, Miss Calm is able to do it. I love it. The <laughs> vagus nerve is a critical element. Multiple studies have shown that nutrition plays a key role in the management of COVID-19 and I know we're getting close. The great JFK once said, the time to repair the roof is when the sun is shining. Everybody understand that health is wealth. And right now they want to make that New Year's resolution 
to be proactive with their health and not reactive. Beautifully said. Are there any other highlights you wanted to leave us with before we end this amazing episode? You know, I appreciate the time. Let me see if I can do a two minute wrap. Before I said one of my more used statements, you can't control the virus, but you can control the host. So let's reiterate some hacks that you can do for the host. GPS and DNA, follow that anti-inflammatory diet, control your glycemic load, avoid food sensitivities and food allergies, decrease your environmental load. When you get into eating and clean eating, make it a priority. Eat more organic foods, eat whole foods. If you're going to eat protein, eat wild smash fish, salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, herring. Consider a plant-based or certainly a plant-forward diet. I think Tom Brady may have it with 80% plant and 20% protein, good quality fruits and vegetables, grass-fed meats, high fiber, nuts and seeds, chicken soup, which is bone broth. If you want to have a snack, dark chocolate's wonderful. Some good herbs like ginger and turmeric. I'm a coffee person, all about that organic coffee and tea. Mushrooms, like we said, intermittent fasting, get sufficient sleep, exercise, chiropractic and naturopathic care, low-level laser, modify stress, support and balance your immune system. Perfect. Now, Dr. Robert, do you take telehealth patients or are you just working in the clinic? How can people connect with you? Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, I am in White Plains, New York. I'm 25 minutes outside the city. I do take telehealth. So anybody feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email is info at drrobertsilverman.com. drrobertsilverman.com is my, uh, wow, that, that's my website. And, you know, follow me on social media. I mean, social media is a great means like today being able to meet people. And, you know, shameless plug, here's my book, Immune Reboot. Anybody interested, it hit the bestseller. A lot of what we talked about is incorporated here. You can go to Amazon if you like or immunereboot.com. Beautiful. And I think I might jump on and, and read your book. I think it's a great topic, very important for my field, certainly. But thank you so much for sharing all of that. It's just so valuable today, I think more than ever. And it's going to keep being valuable. So again, thank you so much for being on and sharing all of that. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. It's been my pleasure. Continue on your path. You do a great job. You're inspiring. Well, thank you so much. And same to you. You've inspired me as well. So thank you. <laughs>